Uh, I'd like to invite Sharon Stone to come up uh, to the podium. We're running a little late and it's important that we raise money. You know, when Erica was speaking, she said that the organization had served, there was some statistic of 391% of goal. And um, if we could only reach 391% of our fundraising goal for today, uh, it would be a fantastic uh, experience. I'm, just, I'm vamping while uh, my good friend comes, my good friend who I just met comes up here. So let me just tell you, I'm gonna give you a one minute, you all know who Sharon Stone is. You don't need me to tell you anything about how beautiful she is. Don't tell my wife. And uh, how talented she is. But I, you know, listen, I first saw Sharon Stone in person in 1999 at a Glide, in our mutual youth, Sharon, uh, at a Glide fundraiser. Uh, and I want you to tell, no, this woman is the real deal. She has been raising money for, you know, a lot of uh, celebrities raise money for fancy causes and it's terrific and, you know, love their work. But Sharon has been devoted in uh, many of her, her charitable hours to raising money for the least privileged. And, uh, you know, it's much less glamorous uh, than some of her peer group. And I remember seeing her in 1999 at the, at the front of a Glide fundraiser raising money for the very same community the very same people that we're trying to, the kind of people that we're all trying to help today. So please join me in welcoming the very gorgeous, the very talented, the very persuasive, and watch out, boys and girls, she's very persuasive, fundraiser and devoted uh, champion of serving and helping the underserved, Sharon Stone. Thank you so much for being here uh, in service to your community. We, uh, we often talk about our community and we, we, we say in our schools, you know, we're going to think about our community and we make little drawings of our community. And, and those are little houses and a little sun and we have our community leaders and we talk about our mayor. And when we think about our community, we don't really say, do little drawings of the homeless people in our community when we say community. And we don't have a face on the homeless people in our community, but the homeless people are a very relevant and ever-growing population of our community that certainly do have faces. And spirits and families and are a very big part of our community. And when we come to know our community, it's important that we know this part of our community because they are our community. And as we know and understand and embrace our community, this is a very relevant piece of our community. As I go around the world and, and, and work, um, as I have for a very long time, I've been um, the global uh, spokesperson, the chairman of an AIDS organization called AMFAR, the American Foundation for AIDS, for a very long time, and I've been working in the homeless community for a very long time, globally. And I see what homelessness, AIDS, it, it's all interrelated. Um, of course, and as I see homelessness around the world, the, it's, it's very similar in any country, in any nation, what homelessness, the face of homelessness looks like, whether you're in a refugee camp in Africa or whether you're in our community here, homelessness is just the same. It's a family who has nowhere to live, no shelter, no access to education, no access to food, no access to toilets, no access to uh, education of any kind. So you're, you're looking at homelessness the same, whether you're in a refugee camp or whether you're on the street here. It's the same face. And so when we look on television and we look at homelessness in Africa and we think, oh, that's just so awful. It's the same thing. It's the same hunger. Hunger is the same. Fear is the same. No place to go to the bathroom is the same. 
my child will never have an education is the same. Anguish is the same. That sense, that mother looking at her child and thinking, oh my God, my child will never have a future is the same. And what's happening now with the, this global economic situation is we have a growing face of homelessness. And when we look at AIDS and disease and this growing situation, what we have, unfortunately, are children without parents homeless in the street. When you are in the street and you see younger and younger children with no parents at all, desperately looking for shelter, a four or a five-year-old running down the street, desperately looking for somewhere to sleep, somewhere to eat, with no one to take care of them at all, no adult at all. When you see a four-year-old with a two-year-old on their back, that is a shocking sense of homelessness. This is our community's sense of responsibility. This is heartbreak. This is our community. When we look at our public servants, we look to them and say, oh, we need this. We need economic development. We need jobs. We need care. We need better everything. But we also have to look to ourselves. And when you arrive here today, I say you are a champion. You are such good citizens, such good community leaders. You have decided to be servants of your own community. You have looked at yourself as community people seeing your entire community. You have decided and chosen to know your community. This means you have chosen to see your community as a whole. That is incredibly relevant. That we, we, we've just had Mother's Day, and I was looking in my bag to say, oh, I wanted to make sure that I could say, we, we're going to auction off some sunglasses, and I wanted to be able to say which brands they were. And I reached in, and I pulled out my Mother's Day card from my four-year-old. And I started to cry, because I thought, these mothers will never see a Mother's Day card. They'll never have that experience. And it broke my heart because my I'm carrying my Mother's Day card around. It's such a banner for me as a mother to carry around my four-year-old's mother, happy Mother's Day. It's such a thrill for me. These mothers will never know that feeling of having that handprint that they carry around, that little wonderful sloppy little handprint. They'll never know that feeling. They'll never know. They'll never know that extraordinary outrage that Marilyn felt when her child was so sick and she had someone to stand by her side. But the wonderful thing is, in all these years that I've worked with in the homeless community, I've seen countless stories like Marilyn's. Countless stories of women changing their lives. Girls that I met when they were 10 and 11 years old who changed their lives, who've become valedictorian of their high school class, valedictorian of their college class, and gone back out into their own communities and have decided to change the world of homelessness. Maryland is not a single story. There are legions of Maryland's. Maryland is not a unique story. Marilyn is a story of countless women who've decided they will not be left voiceless and alone. Marilyn is a woman that you can create the possibility in their lives simply by being here today. So, as you all know, I'm a little bit of a cash taker. 
I, I come in and I, I have one theory, money talks, cash screams. And I'm in here today to give voice to women like Marilyn. Because ultimately, in these communities of homelessness, it's generally the woman that makes the difference. Because unfortunately, it's generally the woman that's left alone in the street. So I'm going to say to you, let's give those women a voice. I've been very lucky with my family that Dior has given me a job, and that job has helped my family be very stable. And they have given us a thousand pairs of sunglasses through their company, um, Soltis. Solstice, and that company has, makes the sunglasses for Balenciaga, Bottega Veneta, Alexander McQueen, Giorgio Armani, Dior Men's, Marc Jacob, and Gucci. And we have men's and women's sunglasses. And they've given us one, six, how much? 65 pairs of sunglasses. Roughly 65 pairs of sunglasses. And I've come up with this scheme, shockingly. I know, because I'm such a wallflower. And my scheme is that I'd like to auction these sunglasses off for $1,000 a pair. Now this donation of $1,000 that is in the 501-3C zone of this charity, 100% tax deductible, would give each pair of glasses would take one family off the street completely and give them a future. So if you donate $1,000 to Compass, you saved one family and you get a pair of sunglasses that will make your future look a lot brighter. <laughs> so I'd like you, if you would like to take, get one pair of sunglasses and every time you put them on, you'll know you've taken one family off the street or five families or 10 families or 20 families, please raise your hand and say, I'm going to save a family today, or five families, or ten families. Just stand up and say, I'm going to save a family. And let's start that now. Let's start the giving tree of families. Who would like to save a family? Great. Just hold up your card at, at your table and say, I'm saving a family. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, 324, 136. 360, 229, five families, thank you so much. And you can give this to your, thank you so much. Did anyone want to give 750 and I just missed your, missed you psychically? Did I miss a 750? 308 for 750. I knew, I just felt you in the room. I felt you and I didn't want to miss you. 209, 356. 247, 210, 209, 342, 314, yes, I love this, 204, 368, 304. Now I'd like to say thank you because you have changed the lives of people in a way that you will know when you see them here thanking you personally because you will have changed their lives. What you're gonna see is someone who was living in a street. And what I can tell you is that very often the children are living in shelters and the mothers are living in refrigerator boxes behind the shelters because there's not room for the mother. I, I have spent so much time with these families so I want to just tell you from the family's perspective, the difference that you have made by being so generous, the fear that you have taken out of their lives, the safety that you have provided, the possibility that you have allowed them to have a first day at school. The chance that you've given them 
to even get a report card. The possibility that you've given them to go to a prom, to have friends. Homeless people don't have friends. These kids are gonna have friends. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon Stone, for all your work.